Hello everyone, welcome back to the Form Museum. Today, we are looking for Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7, uh, settings. And oh, let's go to setting. In the setting, there's a wireless and network, so you can see all the network setting. The one bad thing about this one is when I start using Wi-Fi Direct, then I have to turn up the Wi-Fi. I don't know why, because uh, most of a smartphone or tablet when connect to Wi-Fi direct, I don't have to disconnect the Wi-Fi. But this one, I have to disconnect the Wi-Fi. And talk about the Wi-Fi direct, I will talk in later in the future video when I'm using this tablet in 2021. I will uh, talk about more detail about it. And let's go to sound. In the sound, nothing special, just basic sound setting, change the volume, vibration in intensity, yeah, this tablet has a vibration motor with a haptic feedback. Sometimes some uh, company, a company, they lack of a vibration motor in tablet. And even Galaxy Tab S7, they have a vibration motor, but they don't have a haptic feedback. That's a one of biggest downside of Tab S7 because I think haptic feedback is the most important thing in all the device for the smartphone to tablet. I will talk about that detail in Tab S7 review. And nothing special, just feedback. And display, uh, you can change the uh, wallpaper for home or lock screen, brightness level. And screen mode, I can change to dynamic, standard, natural, and movie. I usually put on natural, but in this one, when I put natural, it's just uh, uh, colors are not so. <laughs> Uh, vivid, so I will put in a uh, standard. And I said I can change this soft key can customizable, which is quick launch. I can change the application, then it change the application button. Nothing, nothing special. And search is just basic Google search. And camera is launch a uh, shortcut for the camera but since this tablet's camera is uh, not so great so yeah so screen capture is the most usable thing i think and i can change the font style size and auto adjust screen power which is kind of old amoled technology has this feature and or device they have horizontal or gyroscope calibration that, that kind of stuff and power saving in power sa saving there's just custom power saving which is when battery power at 50% or all the way down to 10% then the tablet is all make turn of the Wi-Fi Bluetooth GPS those kind of stuff I can change some settings but unlike other uh, Galaxy S2 or Galaxy Note 1, it doesn't have a feature for turn up or lower the clock speed, CPU clock speed and those kind of stuff. So not so useful. In the storage, it's basic storage. So you can see the uh, total space and which part um, eat up how many space, those kind of stuff. At the battery, oh, and in storage, there's a, you can, uh, USB power, uh, PC connector, so as a MTP or PTP, you can change setting up here. And for the battery, you can see all the graphs and which application eat up the battery. Let's talk about the, uh, this tablet battery life. This tablet is about 10 years old. Uh, compared to that, it, the battery life is pretty good. When I using as a just tablet, connect the Wi-Fi, those kind of stuff. I can use nearly eight days with six hours on screen on time. But when I'm using as a smartphone, I put on the, my SIM card, main SIM card, and using phone call and those kind of stuff. Uh, then I didn't use this tablet as a phone for a long time, so I don't have a good information about it. But usually it, it has four hour screen on time in my usage and which is over 10 years about 10 years old 
device is pretty long enough, I think. But the problem is charging speed. It can charge uh, all the way up to 5 volt with 2 amps. It takes forever. It's about 4 hour and 20 minutes to 4 hour and 40 minutes. But when I think about the back in uh, iPad 3 generation area, that time the tablet is take uh, forever to charge. So just uh, it's slow because it's an old tablet. I'm just think that way. But because of uh, the battery is getting really old. So usually when close up to the 100 percent, the charging is slowed down. But in about 95, 97 percent, it just go up to the 100 percent. And application is just basic Android application setting. So you can see all the download or learning app and all the apps. So for example, this one, you can see I can uninstall or clear the data or clear the cache. And I can change the default as a application. And account and sync is basic account. And location service is GPS data usage or and using wireless network to detect my location, those kind of stuff. Security, nothing special. Encrypt the device or SD card or lock the SIM card if the SIM card is installed or make password visible. Install APK file, those kind of stuff. And show contact info, which is in the lock screen right here for Museum Galaxy Tab 7.7, this kind of stuff. So you can change and screen lock. There's a pattern pin password, which is really old style Android screen lock system since I think back in Android 1.0. And there's face unlock, which is start from the Galaxy Nexus, which is Android 4.0 default future. But with this tablet, mm, face unlock is not so great. It's uh, really hard to unlock is pain in butt. In language and input, you can change the language and there's a change the keyboard setting. Probably in the global version, there's only Samsung keyboard and swipe, but there's, it is a Korean model. There's a more key, which is kind of uh, easy type for the Korean. So I just show Samsung keyboard and a swipe. For Samsung keyboard, let's go to memo to demonstrate some keyboard. So basic Samsung keyboard is like so. You can resize to smaller or bigger, but nothing special in the swipe feature. This is a test of Samsung Galaxy. Galaxy Tab, oops. So it's kind of hard to press the little uh, shift key because not only demonstrate right now, but when I'm using this keyboard, I usually uh, misclick this uh, number icon. So, and there's a little fun emoji, I guess. And there's a clipboard as well. So clipboard shortcut. Right now, I just take a bunch of screenshots. So. There's only pictures, so it take a quite a time to load the clipboard, like so. But if I copy the text, then I can just press to uh, input the text. And let's go back to setting and change to swipe. Now the uh, Samsung keyboard, the swipe feature is default in the uh, Samsung keyboard. But at that time, they made a separate application for the swipe and a basic Samsung keyboard. In swipe, you can see this is a test. Something like that. And there's a voice input and there's a, a key, keyboard to make it smaller to one hand easy to type. So this is a test, something like that. In the setting, you can change the each keyboard setting as well. In Samsung keyboard, input uh, language, so you can add or remove language. And 
like a uh, feedback, those kind of stuff. If uh, I want to auto correction, then I can turn on the option for it, those kind of stuff. And swipe, it has a uh, kind of little setting, uh, feedback, those kind of stuff. So not nothing fancy. Backup and restore is back up this device to a uh, Google Store drive or uh, I can reset the uh, device. Dock, when I connect the dock, it have a, a docking sound or those kind of stuff. Date and time is basic date, date and time. Accessibility is default, nothing special, but this tablet has little LED first. But in the widget, there's no LED light. So I have to download a third party application or I can use in the here to turn on the little LED. In the motion, in the motion, uh, there's a tilt to zoom and pan to edit at in 2011, Samsung used a uh, gyroscope to make up some fancy motions, but not so useful. So let's see in here. In here, in gallery, I can two finger and I can take up here to zoom in and take down to zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, those kind of stuff. I prefer just one hand, zoom in, zoom out, or pinch in and out. Let's turn off and pan to edit, which is in the home screen, I just hold the icon and pan to change the different home screen, those kind of stuff. This motion gesture is kind of useless. In developer option, just basic developer option about device, you can see, you can update the software. If there's an update, you can see status, those kind of stuff. And Android version 4.0.4, there's a little Android ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. You press and hold to see cool 8-bit animation. And let's see the speaker. So the speaker quality is not too impressed. And in 2021, it's below average. Plus also this tablet cannot play 1080p 60 frame per second video because when I using this kind of old smartphone ish, I put on the movies in SD card and watching watch the uh, movie during the in the Buzz were when I bored because it's quite uh, complicated to watching in YouTube because YouTube application is stop support in 2021. But when I playing a uh, 1080p 60 frame per second video, the video it stop about every seconds, so it this hardware is not capable to play 1080p 60 frame per second video. So if you want to watching in movie, which is made for 1080p 60 frame per second, then you can, you have to reduce the resolution to 720p 60 frame per second or 1080p 30 frame per second video. So in 2021, you, you use this tablet for just simple uh, video player or music player, media player, then it's kind of pointless to use as a smartphone or other thing because I said in the uh, first, it, this tablet is randomly cannot make or receive phone call. So at that time, I was having really hard time because I have to make a really important 
phone call, but this tablet wasn't unable to make it. So I have to reboot and reinstall the SIM card. I tried to do my best. I just have to wait like 45 minutes to it can make a, another phone call. So it was a really pain in butt at that time. So, so yeah, that's it for the Galaxy Tab S. No, Galaxy Tab 7.7 LTE version. And hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you.